Hello, good weekend, everyone. It's Saturday morning. It's uh, just before the one o'clock games. It's about a little before noon, actually, on East Coast time. And it is NHL Sprap Winter 2018, day one of record. So I spent many, many hours with this file, working on exactly um, figuring out everything we can do about hockey, knowing all that I know as a longtime player and fan. Um, set up all the lines. There's a ton of stuff going on. I'll, I'll get into a little more detail about a per player on a fantasy basis in a minute, but we'll just go over the games because really watching games and picking a team is what I find to be the most fun. So looking at the games tonight, and then we'll get into the deep part of the file. If you want to subscribe to this, it's going to be 30 bucks. You'll get one every day, every day until the end of October, and then we'll revisit it uh, in the upcoming months because we're going to start keeping track soon um, picks that this is going to generate and pick. I would like to challenge uh, Swarm AI is a uh, artificially intelligent program or a company that uh, has been picking NHL games last year. They beat Vegas last year. I would like to challenge Swarm AI against this system to see um, to see who picks better. So uh, watch for that. But let's talk about the games. Edmonton and the Rangers. So what we have here in this uh, table that's showing everything is we've got the time of the game, the team. Uh, the win percentage. So win Y. So this is taking into account um, information in these columns over here, the goalie score, the seasons, the team season score, and the lineup score, which are these things over here. So these three things, goalie score, season score, and the lineup score. Goalie score is taking into account uh, a bunch of information from the goalie stat sheet here, a uh, breakdown of different stats. We weight heavily on save percentage because uh, that's what my buddy told me to do. And um, then we have a season score, a bunch of team stats, uh, which comes out of this uh, team stat sheet, a bunch of different percentages on wins, losses, everything's points, goals, four goals against. There's positives and negatives here. Uh, and then we have the lineup score, which is per player. We have all the players ranked by their goals, assist points, we plus minus penalty minutes, and then we put them all in the lineup. So that's how we get what this lineup score is here. Those are just the people that are playing. And I'll show you how we break down lineups in a second. So, all right. So Edmonton against the Rangers, right? We've got a line here. It's favoring Edmonton. We have a projected score that I'm going to be working on and developing, but right now it's okay for now. Uh, so it's looking at a low scoring game. Um, we have a win percentage uh, uh, of the Rangers winning here. So I guess you'd want to take the Rangers considering that's a good line. Uh, Lundqvist is playing. So the goaltending is better. The season roster is better and the lineup score is better. Um, Goals against for the goalies better. All that stuff's better, so it looks like take the Rangers. Vegas and Philadelphia. Favors Philadelphia due to win strength. They're the favorite. Also thinks it's going to be a 3-1 to one game. Elliott's good. Uh, we don't have a season score on Vegas. Is that right? Let's take a look at that and see if we have any problems. So, um, Actually, no, it's, that's true. Vegas is just not playing well to start off this year. They're 1-4. They have... The formula is working properly here. They just, because they have so many negatives and overtime losses, I gave them a negative. I should really make that a positive, actually. Overtime loss is a positive point. I'm going to change that right now. So what that's going to do is we'll take 20 and we'll do 15 here. So I just changed the weights a little bit. What that's going to do is you'll see that <laughs> Vegas went to a negative 3%. <laughs> How is that possible? Let's take a look at that again. What did we just do here? So they get 20% for win, positive percent for age. Let's not care about age because that's weird. Points, let's give them 20. Let's see what happens now. Negative 6. Wow. I guess what's going on here is, oh yeah, we're taking into account all this stuff. So they have so many goals against that it's making them a negative team. And even strength goals against. Let's cut that down to five, negative five, negative 10, and give them a little bit more for a win, which they don't have any. 
that gets into a 4% season score. Okay, so now we, we have them in the positive. I just didn't want to have a negative season score because that seemed kind of ridiculous. So this is all about the distribution and the weights of what we think is valuable. We'll do some more formulating to regressively look at that and make sure that that is uh, being consistent with our wins as we adjust it throughout the year. That's how this thing gets better all the time, is by continuing to adjust that. So given that that then gives them a slight positive there, it's only going to raise them a little bit. Um, it looks like Philadelphia all the way here. Is there any reason not to? Brian Elliott's been giving up 4.7 goals a game. I'm not sure. Is that right? Is Brian Elliott doing that? Yeah, yeah, he is. I'm not sure why this game doesn't predict more goals. It must be because these teams are not scoring very much. Um, but that's what it's doing. We'll work on it as we go. LA against Ottawa. Uh, two good goaltenders looking at 2 2 game. Likes LA, but I would say that line's kind of rough. Solid lineup score, though. They look like a stronger team. So, yeah, LA looks like they're probably going to win that game. Detroit and Boston really likes Boston 5 2. Probably look at an over there. You got high goals against Fatuka Rask for some reason. Detroit's only 2.9, but if Boston comes in scoring, you can see they're a huge favorite. Uh, might be better just to take the over, but they do look like they're going to win this. It's Carolina versus Mississippi. This is look at this. Carolina underdog. Our file is loving Carolina, 86 percent, seven one. The goaltending situation slightly favors Minnesota, which makes sense. But look at the season score of Minnesota. Apparently not producing. So look at that. That's a huge pick. Take Carolina, Pittsburgh, and Montreal. Slight win for Montreal somehow. But Niemi's uh, goals against is from last year because he hasn't played at all this year. So keep an eye on that. that. That's an interesting game. I remember putting the stats in, so watch out for Niemi. Columbus and Tampa Bay likes Columbus somehow. I guess Tampa Bay is not lighting it up early this year, although they're favored. So that's interesting. It likes Columbus is an upset there. Vancouver and Florida. Likes Vancouver over team. I'm probably going to be watching some games in the near future. See how the Panthers are doing. They're a huge dog, and it picks them to win. So, wow, we'll see if this file has a good day. That would be interesting. Big scoring game in the Toronto-Washington game, of course. Love the over there. Uh, two teams that are fighting and have some action. For some reason, the Caps got destroyed by the Devils the other night. Toronto plays them well. So it does favor Toronto here. As much as I hate to go against my Caps, that's a healthy line for Toronto. Uh, but I'd rather just bet the over and have fun and watch that. Islanders in Nashville. Uh, this is consistent with Nashville winning this game, although Nashville blew in the other night for me. 73 on the goalie score. Islanders looking a little better than you'd think with a 64% season score. This is closer than you think. The line is not good here. Uh, Islanders plus one and a half maybe because you can get a decent line. It is not a good line for Nashville because you see how it's 58 to 60. It's kind of close. Anaheim and Dallas. Anaheim is favored by following a dog in the it's because of Gibson. Bishop. Dallas is favored there. But it likes Anaheim. Baby me, Anaheim plus one and a half. Here's a line. St. Louis and Chicago. It likes the Blackhawks with Cam Ward. Solid goaltending behind Cam Ward. And St. Louis's offense lineup score is not great, although they did put up some goals last night, I believe. So maybe they're waking up. Buffalo, the team to watch, barely favored over Arizona. Arizona won an overtime or a shootout win the other night. They probably won't win again. So Buffalo at plus 120 likes a 2 to 1. That's a good pick. Calgary and Colorado, he doesn't know goal wise, but thinks Colorado will probably win at home with Varlamov playing well early in the year. So. To see how the lineups are all structured, I mean, you can break everybody down and you know look at the games and say, oh, here, here are the people I have on the lines, you know, fantasy-wise, if you care about fantasy points. This is going to break down whatever contribution percentage we've broken down here. So if you want to do something that's more relevant for fantasy points, maybe you'll get rid of something like game-winning goals. I don't know if power play goals are one that you care about. Short-handed goals can be extra. You can change those percentages and then refresh this pivot anytime. And you're going to get different numbers here. 
um, which would help you for fantasy. Uh, I could also extrapolate those numbers to actually total fantasy points and have it listed this way. Um, but it would be an average for the season. And anyway, what you want to see is you want to see, you know, what are your, if you want to do this fantasy wise, um, what I would say is you could take the player name and sort this descending by C score. And what you get is, you know, apparently, is that really, is that really, is that the case that, that John Tavares plays on Toronto? Oh, he got traded, didn't he? Uh, I thought he was an Islander for a second. No, he probably does, but that's why they're scoring so much. Oh my goodness, look what we just found out. So what you can do here is you can open this up and you say, I care about, um, I care about, you know, uh, the, I think, well, for example, let's go back. Um, I know there's going to be errors here, but don't worry about it. Ah, it's going to screw up our projected scores. For, well, we'll go back here for a second. You have to leave that pivot in a certain format in order not to mess with everything else. So we'll probably break out a different pivot if you're really going to do this for fantasy. But what I'm talking about is you, you say, uh, we knew that the Toronto and the Washington game was going to have a lot of scores, right? So if you take Toronto and Washington here, and then you say, I care about the power play lines for both those teams because I want to pick up guys. Who's my best guys to grab? It looks like it's Tavares, Austin Matthews, Morgan Riley. You can see which line they're on and then and who's on power play one. These guys are on power play one. You can see Marla is not really the guy to get point wise, or maybe he is, I don't know. Um, but th there's a whole lot of different ways to look at this. So, um, but in order to get it back for the way it's going to work properly with the current matchup sheet and to do our, all our totals, you have to have the team right there on the left. And it's, so it looks at this grand total over here. So really cool stuff. Um, It'd be nice if some of these upsets pull off today because early in the season, if the stats are starting to mean something, hockey's one of these games where players get on runs and um, teams play well and you know players play most games oftentimes without injury. It's different from football in that sense. So really excited to watch the season and you know what I'm saying, may, may your picks be winning.